Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Reach out to me directly for pricing. Email tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing a watch that launched in 1990, designed by Jörg Heisek, creator of the Vacheron Constantin 222, among others. This is the nautically inspired Breguet Marine 3400 BA, 35.5 millimeters in diameter and yellow gold. It grew out of 1980s preferences for richness and colored gold, but also traditionally small sizes, even in sports watches. So this watch is only 7.8 millimeters thick, as it's 35.5 millimeters in diameter. Lug to lug, compact again, 42.5 millimeters. Not every version of this watch is on a full bracelet, however. This bracelet expands the watch to 50.1 millimeters across the wrist, so it becomes a little bit beefier, and there is a 19 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Heisek and Breguet celebrating Breguet's historical role as supplier to the French Navy or Marine Nationale. We're not talking about the 50s or the 60s, like, say, Rolex and Tudor. No, no, no. We're talking about historical periods, the era of the French crown. Now, taking a quick look at the timepiece, you can see that it is rather elaborate. And despite the fact that it's almost Baroque in its detailing, uh, it does fit quite well. Uh, the watch looks bigger than it is. It is broad, there's no doubt about that. You can see that quite well, uh, it, but it's very flat. It is extremely flat. It's thinner than a Royal Oak Jumbo, and I have to say it's nicely counterweighted too. The bracelet and the clasp are so massive that if you wanted to wear it loose, it wouldn't rotate on the wrist. Now on a strap, this would wear on a tiny wrist. On the bracelet, I can still see it wearing on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference and it slides easily underneath the cuff. If you want something that sort of straddles the fence between an ornate dress watch and a sports watch, this is really it. As you can see, this is a no holds barred bracelet design looking more like an anchor chain converted into a bracelet than something born as a band for the wrist. It's almost a level of complexity and ornate opulence worthy of Gerald Genta. I mean, it really is in that, in that vein, if not literally by him. Now, as you can see, we have a clasp that's a little bit of an unusual one in that you close it and then you latch it shut using this lock. It actually has a side hinge and it latches shut over the top. The bracelet has large gaps between the links, which actually serve to vent the wrist quite well on a hot day. And you can see it's sized uh, using screws and fixtures from the underside. So on one hand, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get to these links from the underside. On the other hand, you can see the entire length of the bracelet is sizable for a secure fit. You can see Horlogère de la Marin. And of course, uh, we have pre-1995 hallmarks on this one, or at least first half 1995 and prior. So this one would have been made between the 1990 debut of the 3400 and the point when these pre mid-year 95 hallmarks were replaced. They would eventually be replaced by a little star or diamond shape with a dog's head. This is the old Helvetic head or the woman. Now, taking a quick look at the case, you can see we have coining and profile. We have welded on lugs. This is old school case manufacturing. Lugs inserted into a slot in the case, welded on and then hand finished to remove the welded joint. Domed bezel with a side lip to define the mid casing. You actually see there's a little bit of a lip to the case back in the bezel defining that coined midsection. No pennies being pinched in the fabrication of this watch. You can see screws and bars were used to fix the bracelet to the case. No spring bars here. The bezel is domed. The sapphire is flat. We have a little bit of a cabochon profile of the crown, and you can see the name Breguet written on the side of the crown. It is a push-down crown. The watch is 50 meters water resistant, so it is reasonably water resistant, but it is not a hardcore aquatic sports watch. Now you can see a lot going on on the dial side. We have guilloche at center, which is always appreciated, but the dial is made of mother of pearl. It's a mother of pearl base, and then we have little gold hour indices, atop each of which is a brilliant cut diamond. We have Breguet style hands for the hours and minutes, and then we have a little needle style counterweighted seconds hand. The hands are steel, they are fire blued, and this is double high horology. You get a Breguet watch, but what's inside is a Jaeger Le Coult 889, which back during this period was the ultra thin high horology automatic customer caliber of reference. So automatic winding with bi-directional action, it does business as Breguet caliber 
549. When you see 549, you know JLC 889. 40 hour power reserve, quick set to eight stop seconds, 36 joules. It beats away at eight beats per second, and it is adjusted in six positions with a 22 carat winding mass. These are premium refinements you don't find on all movements, even high horology movements. It's uncommon to see a 22 carat mass and six position adjustment. This is a fantastic watch. Works well on a smaller wrist, though it has an outsized personality because it is bold and gold and rather elaborate in that distinctively early 90s Jorg Heisek vein. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.